Oh, hi! This week we're making a bag that I got really excited about and I was gonna wait to do because I have so many other irons in the fire and I was like, gotta strike while the idea is hot. And actually my original intent was to make another color block cardigan, but with this pattern and just getting some fat quarters of some solids. Seemed like a good way to practice this technique before buying a bunch of yardage of fleece without knowing how this was gonna go. Just a month or two ago, I worked through all of my fleece hoard and I have one new roll of it that has creeped back into my shop, but it's black solid fleece. So like it's gonna get used, especially getting into the colder months. But I digress. To get back on track, I have been obsessed with Howl Pendragon's jacket from the earlier part of Howl's Moving Castle. I I never seen that movie until this year. Younger me was missing out. I liked it so much. Howl does make me cringe at parts, but dude knows how to dress. So yeah, I thought get some quilting cotton, quilt some pieces together, make some kind of bag out of it and do small scale. Because I've also been wanting to do more intricate bag piecing where I've done big chunks of color blocking where I've added like one strip of a different fabric to the wristlets that I've made. Here are some examples. I think I did a whole video on how to make a wristlet on here and I did color blocking and I loved how that bag turned out. But if I haven't done a bag on wristlets, but if I haven't done a video on wristlets, I've definitely done the boxed corner zipper pouch, so like the base chunk here and it's just adding a little loop with some hardware and a strap. Nothing too buck wild going on. So I will put cards to both of those videos here. Hopefully one has already come by and there's currently a second one up. That would be great of me. Future Joe, please and thank you. And I'll also link those at the very end. So if you want to click to those once you're done watching this, if you want to watch all the way through, you can, you can go there from here. I'll set you up. It'll be great. Also, I never ask people to subscribe, but I guess this would be a good time to mention it. No, no pressure either way. It's fine. I'm not gonna yell at you to push any bells just if you want to. Or maybe you're like me and you've been meaning to subscribe for a channel but you just get so caught up in clicking to the next recommended one by the same person that you kind of forget to hit the button. If you're binging my videos or something, here's your reminder I suppose. Anyway, let's get into the actual assembly of the fabric panels that I made, which I could not have done without the guidance of my fairy god Cheryl because she is a magnificent quilter. She is wildly talented and thankfully likes to share her knowledge. So I'm also passing some of that along to you so you can thank her as well. <laughs> as I showed, I got three different colors of quilting cotton. They're just fat quarters, solid color. There's like a coral, kind of a medium blue, and then like a very buttery yellow. Not neon, not goldenrod, but canary yellow perhaps? Is it doty yellow? Remember when that was a thing? Am I dating myself? <laughs> That's a YouTube era that like is nowhere near the beginning of when I started watching stuff on here. So that being the thing to date me is still like a decade after I got into it in the first place. Oh, I'm so old. Have I had an account for half my life? I'm pretty sure that's the math that's happening in my head right now. I've had a YouTube account since 2006. Um, mm -hmm. that is mind boggling. Ooh, okay, moving on. So I put the yellow fabric aside and worked with the coral in the blue and I cut two and a half inch wide strips. I just layered them on top of each other to keep them nice and even and cut, I don't know, a bunch of strips. I probably should have done something longer, but thankfully I had exactly enough to get the bag pieces that I needed to get out of this. And I didn't necessarily have in mind an exact measurement as far as like what my seam allowance was gonna be versus what I was cutting. I just knew if I kept it consistent for all sets of seams I was doing for this panel, I would get squares. So two and a half inch wide strips and use the edge of the presser foot as the guide. And it was about three eighths of an inch. So I guess that's my standard seam allowance in most situations, which, you know, was helpful to figure out. It's like I'm a goddamn mathematician. Anyway, once I had these strips, also I pressed the heck out of this fabric ahead of time because I did not want any rogue shrinkage happening as I was working on this, especially with wanting such a specific geometric pattern happening. Like I needed some precision to this. I stitched the strips long sides together, alternating colors. So coral blue, coral blue, coral blue. I think I did 10 strips total, but you probably can see how many I cut here. I then pressed the seams open. I have learned that quilters have different methods of how they're pressing their seams. Essentially it's either pressing them open or pressing them to one side. I do think the structural integrity is better when you press them to one side because pressing them open there's just less stability. I don't know. Is that true? Y'all tell me. If there's another technique that you use for this, 
please let me know because I would love to learn. But I went with pressing it open because the light and dark fabric was kind of going to be an issue if I pressed it any other way and had the blue folded under the coral, it was definitely going to show up and I didn't want that. So I figured pressing it open was getting the same color piece of seam allowance under the same color on the outside. So blue was under blue, pink was under pink. Hopefully that makes sense. I realized very quickly that I could see the discoloration with the fabric laid out on like my cutting mat, which is a dark blue. And the only normal interfacing I have is a black SF-101, which works for a lot of things, but not for this. So I did end up going with some batting, which is you know, off-white. It was close enough to work and like give that pop of color to the shade. Like I can't really tell where the seam allowance is on this by like the shading underneath. Does that make sense? There's not like a darker square inside this right here where it wouldn't have shown through here, but definitely on the pink ones. I think you get it. So once all of those were pressed open, nice and crisp, it was time to cut two and a half inch strips going the other way. Here's where the fun begins is as I cut those two and a half inch strips going this way, as I laid them next to each other, I just did a 180 so that they were kind of alternating direction and it very quickly and very excitedly turned into a checkerboard pattern. And I was so excited with how quickly this started looking really cool. So I once again laid all the strips in alternating order. So to each long edge, right sides together. Here's where pressing your seams to one side would have been easier because as my fairy god Cheryl mentioned, it's called nesting your seams where if the seam allowances are going opposite directions when you put them together, that seam is gonna wanna line up because they're gonna wanna like hug, hug into each other. There we go. Where cause I pressed them open, everything was a lot more flat. There wasn't any like ledges to kind of push up against. Having them pressed open meant I had to very tediously pin every intersecting bit. So like both raw edges of each square had to get pinned. Took a little bit of time, totally worth it though. I like putting the pin right between the bits of fabric. Like I don't want it catching either side of the fabric. I want it like weaving between the stitches holding the fabric together, if that makes sense. So then stitched all that together, kept that same 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, pressed those seams open. So they're kind of laying over the original open seams. And I cannot believe that this is a thing that I just made. And it was less complicated, like time consuming and tedious, but not super difficult to wrap my head around. And I, I, j I can't believe how cool this looks. And I thought I was gonna have to sew every individual square together to make this panel. But this is the sorcery of quilting and what Cheryl was telling me. And I like, mind blowing, so cool. I wanna learn more about constructing blocks. Cause it seems like there's so many tricks to the trade. Once I have the panel done, that felt like the biggest hurdle to get over. I did decide on a wristlet bag just cause it's not a huge panel. And I am very familiar with making wristlets cause that's one of my favorite parts of my inventory for when I'm doing events. You will not see this in time for the market I'm gonna have this bag at, but I am doing some mill number five events in Lowell, Massachusetts. I can list the dates below. There's a couple in December, they're all Saturdays. Hopefully there's more than just two in December, but this coming Saturday, I am going to be there. It's the oddity marketplace. I feel like as into jackalopes as I am and cryptids in general, it is the place I should be and just like spooky bitch shit. So yeah, I got a last minute email today telling me that they had a spot open if I wanted it and I can do it and I'm so, so excited. Anyway, so wristlet bag. I do have this pattern, all of the measurements and schematics. It's built specifically around seven inch zippers. So if you buy like bulks of those or like that's just a very accessible zipper length to buy out in the world. That's what this is suited for. So I have it up for free on my Patreon. You don't have to donate to have access to the pattern. If you just look up pattern, it'll say upgraded boxed corner zipper pouch, something like that. And yeah, link to my Patreon below. And as all y'all know, like it's cause of them that that stuff gets to be free. So also while we're giving thanks, it is literally the day after Thanksgiving that this is going up. Perfect. This is perfect. It's all coming together. Yeah, just appreciating how fucking generous everybody is with me. And I hope me sharing all of this stuff in the ideas, like I know some of the tiers on Patreon get physical perks from me, but I just, I hope you enjoy this little corner of the internet as much as I do, because y'all play as big of a part in that being as great as it is as I do. So like, 
thank you. Oh, okay, because Hal's jacket is pink sleeves and then there's like yellow trim as like a binding almost and then there's a red lining. So for the strap and the little loop that holds on the D-ring, I decided to do pink for those because that's the most prominent color on his whole outfit. And because there's just a little bordering of yellow, I decided the zipper tabs and the zipper would be that color. So it turned out this was the only bit of the yellow fabric I ended up using in the bag, which is hilarious to have bought a whole fat quarter for this. Obviously the rest will get used, especially because I did cut out yellow lining pieces because it's the other fabric I had. I like using lighter colors when I can for the lining and it just was what I was thinking of. And then you can see me concede to the fact that I it needs to be red. If I'm going this hard, like we're gonna whole ass this and not half ass this. Oh, and I also needed some interfacing for the strap and the loop for the D-ring. And I decided on batting as I mentioned earlier cause the black interfacing I have would, would not work for what I'm doing cause the fabric is so light. So I just very loosely cut out two pieces of just this quarter inch thick, I think, quilting batting. I got two bags that had giant rolls in them for a dollar each at the thrift store. So I called that a win. And yeah, the only white interfacing I had for the strap is just little tiny scraps. And then I have this piece that I got. It's like a pre-measured out like wrist, not wristband, waistband interfacing. So I've just been cutting that up because I often need it for strapping or waistbands and I don't need this whole thing to go in there. So just utilizing what I have, I'm sure I thrifted that for like a quarter back in the day, meaning probably 12 years ago, if not more. And okay, I have regrets about tackling the strap this way because I have found my biggest frustration with making wristlets is making the wrist part because I would put interfacing along the middle part of the strap piece, iron it in half and then iron like a quarter of an inch in, almost bias tape style, but not quite as deep. And then I would do edge stitching and it, it just takes forever pressing it nice and neat like that. And I dread it every time. It's my least favorite part of making a wristlet is, you know, making it into a wristlet. <laughs> I suppose I could have left this just as a zipper pouch, but I don't know. I have the material to do the wrist strap. So we did it. I tried a different method that like, it was fine, but it's not any better, I don't think, than the other way. I think it's a slightly less clean way to do it, which is take two slightly narrower pieces, lay them right sides together, interface one side, and then sew it right sides together, and then flip it out. But nobody likes tube turning if you can avoid it. So that's what doing the bias tape method helped avoid. And I just, I wish I hadn't done it. Also, then I was stuck with two raw ends of the strap once I had turned it out. And then rather than sewing it together in a nice neat way, like I do when I tackle the other method, I had to like fold one end in and then tuck it inside. And then I started stitching that, but then realized, wait, that literally is the last step because the bag has to be made and the hardware has to be sticking out until I put the strap on. So, all right, once I got all of the other ephemera sorted out, I, it was time to tackle cutting out the actual quilted pieces of the bag. I was dreading it because I put so much time and was so proud of how it looked and like didn't want to fuck it up. So I took my pattern piece, I laid it down. I thought having the like bottom of the bag where the corners come in towards the middle would give me more wiggle room. Finally, after like chalking stuff out, I thank goodness I did not cut it, that first chalk line before checking the other side to make sure I had enough. But I spent forever lining it up and then realized, oh, if I have the tapered in part towards the corner, that gives me like a whole nother inch to work with for both sides. So I had way more wiggle room doing it that way and was able to get both panels. I cut the same part of the pattern, not alternating, it's not mirroring, it like it lined up so well. I mean, I took my time with it. It was the intention spending this effort on it. And okay, I, I know I'm jumping ahead a bit, but like to toot my own horn for a second, the, the way this stuff is lined up, like it all makes little diamonds on the edge. Like I spent so much time making this happen and it shows. And that makes me very proud of myself. Cool. I didn't want to take the time to do it, but I'm glad I did. Once those were cut out, I laid the wrong side of the quilted fabric pieces on top of some of the batting. As I said, I had loosely cut out two rectangles. I gave myself like a wide berth around the edges just so I had plenty of wiggle room and I could just trim it down after, it'd be fine. And I tried attaching these two layers a couple ways because normally 
I really like using fusible fleece, but I can't find that shit anywhere. I got shamed out of a yarn and fiber store for asking about it because I guess they're purists about their batting and don't do iron on anything. I'm apparently a monster for asking if a place that sells sewing supplies would dare sell a Pellon product. They use other Pellon stuff, but just not the iron on things, I guess. Maybe I'm just cheap white trash because I like using the irony stuff. Think I prefer that, especially for bags, because you don't wash it as much as something that has like a waistband in it, where like that glue can deteriorate after a while. But anyway, that is a, another conversation for another day. We're not here for gatekeeping or elitism. Get out of here with that. We're here to make stuff and have fun and share knowledge and nerd out about stuff. <laughs> anyway, I needed to attach the quilted bits to the batting and initially I tried stitch in the ditch, which bring back to waistbands. I love that part of finishing a skirt is doing the stitch in the ditch on the front. Oh, so satisfying. That was not working out very well because of the alternating colors. I hated how it was looking. So then I tried like top stitching an eighth of an inch in from the edge of at least the pink panels. And I also hated how that looked. So then I could have done this by hand. It felt maybe a little more durable. I don't know. Maybe it was me being lazy. Who knows? We'll never know. But at all the intersections of pieces, like the four corners meeting up, I did just like a little bit of back tacking, two to three stitches back and forth over the corners and technically stitching in the ditch, but just trying to be as discreet as possible. Super pumped with how that came out, at least for this type of like checkerboard situation, probably how I'll tackle it going forward if I do this again. I want to make more and I will, but the downside is, especially doing this for inventory, like I definitely have to charge more. I need to just come to terms with that. Oh, just trying not to undersell myself, but that's like my default setting. Then I assembled all of this like any other zipper pouch that I've made. Again, I go way more into detail in some other videos. So rather than go over all of that again, if you've already watched it, I will just link to those and you can check them out at your leisure. I am still not over this. Oh, I did choose to use yellow stitching for like any of the construction pieces and any accent stuff. Cause like there, I wasn't gonna switch thread colors. I think sticking with yellow was the move cause that's the trim color. I really like that pink's the predominant color because that's how it looks on his garment and that I did switch to the red lining because it, it just, this is Hal's jacket. It, this is what it looks like and the batting makes it feel really nice. And honestly, just running my hands over the checkerboard seam, like everything's nice and even. Oh, I love it so much. I think that tactile experience would not be as nice had I hand tacked all of this down. So. That is my argument against having done that. We did it. I'm so excited because they deserve being brought up again. I almost said brung up. Is brung a word? Branged? Everyone over on Patreon. Because y'all, I get to take time to do this. Like I quilted my own fabric to make into panels, to make into bags. Like this took a lot of hours to put together, more than any of the other bags I've made, I think. I am obsessed with it and it came out so well and I have way better sewing skills nowadays than I ever have because of everybody. Thank you a million times over for gifting me this ability and opportunity. It means the world. I think on that note, I am just realizing that I forgot to eat lunch and it is past four o'clock. So I'm gonna go get some snacks. Bert was in here earlier, but he just prefers hanging out on the couch now. Again, it's getting colder. So I think he just wants to be bundled up under blankets instead of in his cat tent because this is the coldest room in the house. So I don't blame him. He's a little cozy bean boy that needs to get baked in his own stink. And he's not gonna get that as readily in here. So just trying not to take it personally. Children, what are you gonna do? Uh, if you haven't been here before, Bert is my dog. I don't actually have a child. <sighs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna head out. I hope you all are as jazzed about this project as I am. Cause like, I can't believe I made that with my hands. That's an idea I had and it came out even better than what I was picturing and just feeling very lucky and proud. So I'll see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Ooh, I haven't done that in a long time. My hands aren't even that clammy where I am often very sweaty. Not today, it's too cold for that.